Okay, I don't know where to start. <laughs> just, part of me is like, hi, Katie. Welcome to a well-designed business. <laughs> and the other part of me is, you guys got to go to YouTube because we are like, like our smiles are bigger than the entire screen. We like are like this self, you know, and cross love admiration society, Katie and I, since we met a hundred years ago, which we will link in the podcast when she was on the show back in 2016 or 17. And I'm like, okay, get serious. Hi, Katie. Welcome Hi. to a well-designed business. <laughs> I think it's a testament for how how much of ourselves we see in each other and honor in each other. Yes. Holy moly, because you and I have been in this podcasting kind of life for quite some time together. Yes, I know. And it's so funny because I will just I, I know I've told you this story, but I will tell it to you and tell all of my friends listening. I started podcasting 2016. I went to podcast movement in 2016. And I remember walking by and seeing you. And I was like, that's Katie Kermis. That's Katie Kermis. <laughs> I was like, and I was at podcast movement by myself. And I'm like walking around going, oh my God, did you know that's a Katie over there? And I listened to your Biz Women Rock podcast like on overdrive like I and I, when I was building like you know the, the plan for the podcast in 2015 I was listening to you and um you know what Katie you know I remember somehow I just said hello or you you might have looked at me and smiled and you know what you you can just write the book from there we've been together ever <laughs> since <laughs> you're just such an easy person to love and you know why it's because you're just so uh, unapologetically yourself. And I think that that's what had us laughing right before. I would this. throw <laughs> that right back. Yes. <laughs> Which is so beautiful. And yes, we have been alongside each other in this podcasting journey ever since. Yes. Yes. And I'm so glad that, um, you know, we've had the chance to meet in real life and you were the impetus for that. And I want to actually, I don't know that I've actually ever thanked you for that. I'm not the person that will go out of my way and say, oh, I know a person that lives in that city. Let me reach out. I'm not. I just, I stay in my lane. I do my things head down. And the first time I was coming to Tampa to do um, a, a keynote was 2017. So we met in 2016. Yeah. And you're like, hey girl, I see you're going to be in Tampa. I live right here. Want to get together? And I'm like, I love Katie, but I don't do this stuff. I don't do coffee. <laughs> But we did. We, we had did. Right out on the water. Because I truly, I was like, you know what? This is a good human. And that yeah. really was the beginning of all the meaningful things. It really yeah. was. Yeah. And then last year, when I had to go uh, to Tampa for my niece's wedding, I was like, hey, Katie, I'm coming in. Now I'm like, oh, I, I get this now. This is how friendship works, sweetie. Yes. <laughs> and we had a great time. We had good coffee. So. Yes. Yes. And the matcha, matcha tea at your, matcha your, tea. your, your yes. special place, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. We, I, you know, like I said, it's a love fest. Um, but the love fest for me um, is based in a very deep respect for you and what you do. First, when you came out into the world as a businesswoman, teaching the rest of us women how to be businesswomen. Um, but now, you know, the last several years, you've morphed into this journey of wellness and helping women have a well-designed life, another synergy of ours. Yeah. Um, and you do it, you know, through your meditation podcast, you do it by being who you are. But Katie, talk to us about what this work means to a well-designed life and helping women achieve this. Yeah. You know, I think at the end of the day, it, for me, it means that I can pour my gifts and my heart out to the women of the world who are listening to my podcast, which I'll explain a little bit about later. Um, and I can do that in a way that really touches their soul. Um, so what I mean by that is, uh, as Luann had mentioned, I, you know, years ago in 2014 is when I had the Biz Women Rock podcast. So I OG podcaster. And then in 2018, kind of in the at the height of mm -hmm. the success of that whole business and show. Um, I became pregnant with my second daughter and immediately didn't knew that I was done with it. Um, mm -hmm. and the, I'll make the very long story short. I basically transitioned out of that and was in this, like, what am I going to do? And I immediately knew, like, I want to have a meditation podcast. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and in 2018, if you looked up meditation and women in any podcast player, one podcast existed. Whoa. One. So I was Whoa. like, 
okay, I and have there's a space. I, there's a space here. I can't believe it. Um, but I will, I will take on that challenge. Like I have something to say. I have good stuff to whisper to women through a meditation. I have really good words affirming positive, beautiful, loving words to share with them. I can package yes. that in a meditation. Um, and I can, I can really offer a lot in this space. So in 2018, I launched my very first podcast, Meditation for Women. And, um, and fast forward, we now have 20 different podcasts that <laughs> are a last part. Last time I talked to you about it was eight. I know. was 20. <laughs> and that was 20. only a couple of months ago, girl. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I move fast. But we have 20 podcasts. And you know, we have meditation for women, sleep meditation for women, uh, morning meditation for women, daily affirmations, sleep stories. Um, our our last five bundle of five podcasts are all kids specific meditation for kids, sleep meditation mm. for kids, sleep Those sounds are the for new kids. Ones for me, I didn't yeah. know that. One. Yeah. So for me, what it has been, and that's been about six years now that I've been doing that, and and it's gratefully grown. You know, when you, you finally sort of like click into place yes, and everything and, and you realize like, oh my gosh, everything that I had been doing has led me up to being yes. able to make it sink and sing here. That's what this company has been for me. So, um, I'm a writer at heart. I, I feel like I'm a very good communicator in a way that really touches the, the, the listener and, and is she's able to hear my words and be like, yes, oh my gosh, that feels like a, lo a hug that I needed right now. And so I've sort of infused that in. Obviously, my career as a podcaster has come in handy and that I wasn't <laughs> starting from scratch. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that sort of anchored themselves here and has has blown life into this. So, you know, going from one podcast to 20, we we get about 4 million downloads every single month across the network. <laughs> We get, yeah, we have about 140 million <laughs> lifetime downloads, which is puts me in the Holy top 0.1% of podcasters. And yes. I don't say that to brag. I say that to put it in perspective that and this why my big why behind why I'm offering meditations and why I'm creating these meditations for women is because I have seen meditation as a tool, one of the many tools, but a very powerful tool in my life to help me get to know myself, listen to my intuition. And then therefore, based on what my intuition is telling me, based on what my inner voice is telling me, I get to then make decisions that allow me to, to build and design my own well-designed life, my mm -hmm. own well-designed business, right? Yes, yes. So for me, that's where the love really is, 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 you know, yes, I want a meditation that's going to help you sleep. Yes, I'm going to create meditations to help you lower your blood pressure and get you calm in a, in a rough moment. But there's something deeper behind there. And it's really a tool for um, giving you easy, free access to a tool that allows you to get to know yourself. So I love this because, of course, um, I've listened to your sleep meditations. That's where I'm like, okay, you know what? girl, let, let's get our friend over here. <laughs> let's, like, 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 let's help Katie put me to sleep here, right? Yes. Um, but I just heard there, Katie, and you know that I started meditating when I was 10 years old. Yeah. My aunt used to do guided meditations for us, all of us laying on the floor. You know, my whole childhood and teen years were, okay, we're at Aunt Honey's house. Everybody lay on the floor and she could guide us through a meditation. Oh, um, so special. Yes, yes. And and also, of course, and then you would take it back. So I can recall my entire childhood just like going to level, we would call it, and breathing deep and then, you know, doing our affirmations. Of course, it was it was presented to us as children with different language, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the translation is the exact same thing. That they were they were teaching us breathing techniques, they were teaching us visualization and affirmation techniques and so forth. Um, so it's second nature to me. But you know what I just heard? in there as much I, I'm a little embarrassed because what's interesting is is using meditation as a mechanism whether it is to sleep or it is to calm yourself or to center yourself is different than using meditation as a discovery tool mm. and mm. what's what I'm like my my brain is banging around is as a child and young adult, I did use it more 
as a discovery tool. And now I'm just like, girl, you just need to go to sleep. Put Katie on. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. I, I, I'll take that too. Because, well, truthfully, they actually work hand in hand. Because if you're in an anxious moment, for example, so we have a whole podcast called Meditation for Anxiety, very popular podcast. Um, mm -hmm. And we have a lot of people listening in, the, in those really high stress moments. We have a podcast called uh, Panic Attack Meditation, specifically mm -hmm. for those very high intense moments. Wow. If, if you can use meditation as a, as a practical tool to, to transcend those moments and to move through those moments, you know, you learn something about yourself on the other end of it. Mm -hmm. So they're really, they, all of the, that kind of goes hand in hand. If you're not sleeping well, you're not going to be well. So right, right, you, right, right. you need, they, you know, they sort of have this do this double effect of being able to sort of help with the very earthly needs that we have in the mm -hmm. moment. And tactical and also, strategies like to attend yeah. and address those earthly needs at the moment, right? Exactly. And mm -hmm. hand in hand with that comes this ability to have a little bit more self-awareness, to have a little bit more knowing of who we are. And so that, 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 that you've said a couple of times now, knowing who we are. So is it something that it simply with practice and quieting your mind or are there meditations that Katie, you specifically craft to, you know, trigger questions for us or prompts for us to know who we are? All of the above. Okay. <laughs> so yes, there are what I would call your general meditations, more popular meditations that are like breathing techniques, right? And in, in those breathing techniques, in, you know, these, the sort of a construction of a, of a meditation that allows a little bit more space between the thoughts, a little bit more opportunities to observe the thoughts and therefore you're the observer and not the thought. Like, mm. you know, there are very deliberate techniques that we're doing within these meditations in order to, um, to, to give you that opportunity to experience that. And much of my meditations are, um, so I have other writers at this point as well. The ones that I still write are very poetic. I have I have definitely evolved as a writer in this process over these past six years. They're very poetic and they're done with the intention of really connecting the listener to that emotion, mm. whether it was a high or a low emotion, mm. allowing them to be seen and okay mm -hmm. and validated in that, and then yes. working through it. So I'll give you this example. It's a very practical example. Um the other, I don't know, two weeks ago, I have a five-year-old and an eight-year-old and whatever the, was something the five-year-old did just put me over the edge. Cause it was like, you know, the, the 10th time that she did it. And I had a moment, a mom moment of just a primal scream, like primal, like not at her. I like legit turned away and did this primal scream into the heavens. Right. Like it was bad. It's so true though. We it's so true. There. It's so true. I scared my kid. Like it Aww. was scary. Right. And so now I have to heal that. Yeah. So I wrote this poem that I will turn into a meditation. This is generally how my meditations get made. <laughs> From real life. <laughs> From real life. And it was called, um, uh, oh my gosh. Oh man. It was such a good title. What the heck was the title? Like I, um, I blew up at my kid today. That's what it was oh. called. Oh, okay. So it was called, I blew up at my kid today. I'm actually going to read you just the first little part because it'll make sense. Yes. Um, I blew up at my kid today. I screamed deep from my core. I blew up at my kid today. Couldn't hold it anymore. It shook the room to silent. Her eyes were wide and wet. I knew that I had messed up and filled with deep regret. I took deep breaths in front of her and hugged her with such love. I'm sorry for yelling loudly. Please forgive what I have done. The rest oh, of that I continues on. Literally, like my body is tingling. Katie. Yeah, literally, yeah. my body is tingling. I am not exaggerating one bit. From the top of my head all the way down my legs and my back, I'm tingling. I mean, anybody like anybody that's raised a kid knows that exact moment. Exactly. Exactly. It's, and and what I want to say to you is, and I know this is why you do it. Because if I'm, I'm, I'm viscerally, I can never say that word. I'm like literally reacting to it. And it's probably been 30 years since I've done that. Okay. Um, and I can imagine if I'm the mom who did that that day, right. like, it's just, it's like, okay, this is real life. I am not alone. Yeah. 
this isn't desirable. I don't want this behavior in myself, right. but it is human and I am exactly. part of the human race, right? So that process is what I end up going through continually in that poem, which is like, hey, I know there's something here. Let me look inside. It's fear, you know, like yeah. really pro like making things right with my kid, but then really having to ask, why did that just happen? So basically, in you know, in each of these, I'm... I'm emoting and giving an opportunity for the listener to connect with a very human experience that most likely I have had and I know they've had yeah. and then taking them through the journey of transcending it and processing or processing and then transcending it. Yes. So, and then I just happen to package that in a meditation. That's right, really right, what right. it is. So yeah. I read that poem, I, you know, about once or twice a month, I'll get on the mic and I'll just sort of riff to my, it won't be a meditation. I just sort of like riff and say hello to everyone. And earlier this month in May, you know, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, so I'm talking about that. And I read this poem, and I said, I want you to know that in our, in our, in our desire to build and grow and expand into these optimal lives that we really want, they're going to be really low moments. Let me share with you one I had. Yeah, and I read yeah, that yeah. poem. I had so many people reach out to me. Oh, I'm sure. Oh my God! Thank I just I just experienced that. Thank you so much. Like, cause it that for me is very healing. And when you can, when you can heal that, give yourself grace, learn from it, move beyond it. That to me is, is a tool for self-awareness that allows us to not be held down by the guilt or the shame of what it was and the humanness that we're experiencing in moments and allows us instead to open a space to this deep spiritual person that we are. And it allows that intuition to speak to us. And then we can then move forward based on what that intuition tells us because mm -hmm. she's always right. She's always yeah. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. The goddess, is, <laughs> the goddess knows. Don't go against the goddess. She yeah. knows. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love this because, you know, by coincidence, you select a an example of, a, of what happens in interaction with a parent and a child, right? But, like, Either A or B, either you're a parent who also runs a business. And so the frustration at the business is now planted on the kid or you're a parent who runs a business and just had this crazy moment where the kid will not leave the shoes on. Like I, 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 my daughter, I can remember when she was three years old, there was one day, every single time I, you know, I get her dressed, you know, Vinny is out of town. I get her dressed. Well, this day is seared into my brain, Katie. I get <laughs> her dressed. I do. I can picture it where it was in the house. She's three years. She's three and a half years old. I get her dress and I'm like, okay, mommy's got to brush her teeth. I just got to finish up. I would run from the bathroom to go to my room to like, I don't know, put the clothes on. And I come out and there's the sneakers off. I'm like, sweetie, got to put the sneakers on. Leave the sneakers on. Mommy, put it. go back in the bathroom, do something else, fix my hair, do makeup, come back, sneakers off. Like literally like five times. And then I had that moment that you just had. And I lost my guts on it. I'm like, why don't you want that thing? Like, and Christy and I have talked about this. She's like, mom, you're so scarred by this. And I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What, thank you for that miracle, right? Right. I'm like, really? Because I like have been sorry for it for 31 years. <laughs> but the thing is, my point is, is that if I'm accurate with myself, and I think most of us need to be, Yes, it's frustrating if a kid is going to take their sneakers off, five, sneakers off five times. But really what I know is, even when I go back to my memory of it, it's because I had to be at an appointment. I had to get to a sales call to knock on somebody's door and say, hi, I'm Luann from Window Works. It really, there's, and that's the crazy part of it. There's another day you're like, you silly goose, putting your sneakers off every time. Let mommy do it again. Like some days you show up with patients. They I don't know. know what days, right? And so- for us as business owners, whether you are taking care of your own parents, you're taking care of children, or you just have a big team, like you're taking care of a lot of people. And I yes. think what you're saying is you got to take care of yourself first or you have no juice for everybody else. A hundred percent. And I feel like, you know, you could, you could bring this scenario right into business in that you can make a big mistake in business and yeah. you can choose to either kind of, you know, ride the path of shame and blame and make yourself wrong for it for a, for a long time. Mm. And the universe will respond. You're going to get more of that. Yeah. You're going to, your the business ain't going to be so good. Or you can do the hard work to come inside and say, what, like, un, let's unpack what is here. What's going on? 
how, what do I need to do? So, you know, I feel like, um, I feel like it, it's about taking care of ourselves, but, and I, it's so funny because in mental health awareness month that we're in right now, it, there's so much, the language is like, take care of yourself, you know, be kind to your mind. And that's great. But you can't answer the question of how do I take care of myself until you know, what do I need? Mm. Like, what do I need? And to me, that comes down to knowing thyself. Mm -hmm. What do you need right now? And I'll give you this example. Um, <laughs> talk about Vinny being out of town. My husband is out of town right now. He's out of the country. I'm single momming it for like 10 days. Right. And I'm in the first third of that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> exactly. Hang on kid. Hang on. I know. <laughs> okay. So, um, I'm a couple, I'm a couple days into it. I'm already kind of losing my, my goose. Right. And it's the kids are extra needy because daddy's not here to kind of sure. balance things Transition, out. Transition. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't get, you know, daddy usually picks up kids a couple days a week. So like now I'm like, or I don't have that extra time for the work that I usually would have. So there's just a lot of things adjusting. So, um, so <laughs> So I reach out to my, one of my girlfriends and I'm just like, oh my gosh. And by the way, super important. You want to talk about mental health. Who, who's in your circle? You and need a tribe of women. <laughs> <them. Yes. laughs> so I reached out to my girlfriend and my girlfriend, Jess, and I was like, oh my God, I'm going nuts. Boom, 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 boom. Here's all the things. Right. And what's her, what's her reaction? Her reaction is immediately, oh my gosh, girl, I'm so sorry. What can I do for you? And I was Aww. like, nothing. I just need you to listen. So sure enough, this morning she texted me. She's like, I'm going to be in your area around this time. I'm bringing you lunch. What can I bring you? And I'm like, oh my God. Okay. Oh my gosh. So, and I say, yes, that's the thing. Like, I know I need that. Like yes. the, the worker in me is like, oh, but I need that time to do A, B, and C to get those tasks done. But I was like, that's actually not what I need. What I need is a little TLC, right? Yeah. I need a little, a little, little adult love. time, a little girl time, a little yeah. like, yep, I got 90 more days with these kids and one hour with my friend <laughs> will be really great. <laughs> That'll be so life-giving. <laughs> So not only does she come over and she, and it was right before this, she came over, she brought me lunch. Um, I was getting ready to come on with you. And, Cause I told her, I was like, I have, a, I have an interview at one thirty. So she's like, okay, you go to your interview. I'm washing your dishes. Cause I know you hate that. And I was like, no, 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 no. She's like, let me do this. Let me wash your dishes. And she just washed my dishes and left wow. while we were talking. And I'm like, so caring for oneself requires, you know, yourself well enough to to be able to answer the question, what do I need right now? And it's okay if it's not what's quote unquote expected. What I needed today is I needed some TLC. I needed yes. my girlfriend to love on me and I needed someone to do my damn dishes that I hate <laughs> doing. I literally, the dishes are my husband's job. And I last night I texted him the picture of the massive mountain of dishes. And I was like, <laughs> I hate dishes. When are you coming home? <laughs> That's it. I miss your person, but I actually miss my oh, dishwasher yeah. as Pretty my... much. Oh yeah, and I miss you too. <laughs> love ya. <laughs> you know, oh, what I love though, Katie, is like when you're saying like know yourself yeah. and also like you reaching out. And yes. it's and and the thing is too, it's like you didn't reach out and you really didn't reach out to say come help me. Right? right. But even just saying, I don't need help. I just need to talk. I need to vent. I need to just share it. Now that's something that we have to take ownership to do for ourselves. And, yes. and not every friend is going to jump in the car, bring us lunch and make us dishes. Some friends are going to say, okay, I'm going to give you an ear for 20 minutes. Exactly. It's what you asked for, or what you needed. And right. that will be like, she was like, you know, cherry on the top, you know, know what I'm saying? Um, but, and then the secondary to your point, and I want to emphasize it is saying, yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, yes. Thank yes. you. Okay. I could order DoorDash and get lunch, but you know what? It's going to be, feel more special with you bringing it to me and me getting to share it with you. That's exactly. a whole lot different than chomping it down, looking at the computer, writing, you know, whatever for the website. Right. 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 Being able to receive like legit yes. being able to receive yes. from people who love you and who want and who, who get filled to give for yeah. giving to you. So, so that's really important. So again, I feel like, um, putting time in, if we come back to the main desire, which is I want to build a well-designed business, I want to build a, build a well-designed life, then it comes down to what are you doing to get to know yourself so mm -hmm. that you know what you need, you know the answers already. 
the answers actually are not outside of you. The answers are all within you. So, you know, when we talk about taking care of our holistic selves, our minds, our physical health, our mental health, and then when we talk about taking care of our business and all the different things that makes our business healthy, the answers to all of those things are all within us. So what are mm. we doing? What are you doing to to give yourself that that space to know yourself? Mm. Meditation, great tool. Obviously, I love it. Journaling, another great tool. Something I've been doing ever since I was a little kid. I love journaling out what it is, who I am, the ideas I'm having, questions I want to ask myself to figure out. Um, being in nature, huge, mm, yeah. huge way to be able to get to know yourself. Um, moving, some people call them moving meditations, but just moving, like yes. running, uh, working out, being physical, like having some sort of a movement that gets your body and mind in sync. These are all real, talking things out with a trusted friend, like being able to talk out your heart and being able to have it be received by somebody who loves and cares for you and can hold that space for you. These are all really good practical tools to help yourself get to know yourself so that you can know exactly what to do to build your well-designed life and to build your well-designed business. And you know what I'm hearing? I, I mentioned to you a few moments ago that I think through my younger years, I was much more conscious of utilizing meditation as a space to know and to hear, to hear my intuition is really what I just like, I was like, whoa, yeah. like, do you do that now? Right. And I think everything you just said, when you think about moving your body or walking or being in nature and all those things, what I'm making the connection now is I do all of those things, right? I'm going to walk at the beach every single week, winter, spring, summer, or fall. I will, you know, it's 18 degrees out. Vinny looks at me like, you're a lunatic. I'm like, but I have enough clothes on, so it's fine. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I love walking on the beach when it's cold, yeah. right? It's crazy, right? I have no idea what that's like, but that sounds yes, lovely. Yes, right? You Florida girl, right? <laughs> you know what it is, too, about it is it's, it's three quarter, three seasons of the year. This is true, but it's empty. Right. Mm, like if I walk so on the beach powerful. in July, it's like, OK, run around that sandcastle. It's 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 interesting and um, beneficial in a different way, not in that I'm disconnecting way because you can't disconnect. You'll like walk over two year olds and knock them over and into the surf. And that's not going to be a good scene. So, <laughs> <laughs> But the thing is, what I'm saying is, is I just had the aha. I am doing my at minimum seven minutes of moving my body every single day since June 5th of last June 25th of last year. I have added, I now have a, I always had a trampoline, a rebounder. Now I have one in all three locations. I come out of a podcast interview. I go on the rebounder, I right? Love it. All the things. And so I've added back in a lot of the old Luam um, wellness habits that I had practiced without even thinking about a practice. It was like, brush your teeth. You're going to do this. It's exactly how I lived. But you know what, Katie? I just heard is the taking time out for not sleep meditation, go to sleep, Luann, but just meditation exploration. Mm -hmm. That's giving the place in my mind for all of the thoughts that come during all of those activities to show up. And like you said, contribute to knowing what I need better mm -hmm. because those activities spar lots of ideas. Lots mm -hmm. of ideas, yeah. but I'm hearing and seeing now that the meditation mechanism could be the place for the, 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 the almost like the, what are the, what are the, the, because what I know will happen was, will be the really important things that my goddess voice wants me to know will bubble up in that complete quiet and rest. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and yeah. she bubbles up. She bubbles up all the time. It's just oh, yeah. a matter like, of our... He's like banging on my head like 24-7. <laughs> but you got to get a little peace here. You know what I mean? So the important yeah. things can come through, right? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, let me make sure you hear me on this. Like meditation, and I, I say this because there are a lot of people who get stuck on, I can't sit still for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. Oh, right. And I can't keep my mind blank for that long. And it's so frustrating. And yes, it can be. But, you know, it, it's not our job to stop our mind from moving. It's not our job to stop, stop our mind from thinking. The brain's job is to make thoughts, right? Our job in these meditations is to, or this meditation time, is to simply observe those thoughts as yeah. they come through, to become the observer, as I had mentioned before, and to sort of allow them to sort of pass by like yeah. clouds in the sky, right? And right. when you do that over and over again, 
I'll refer back to what I had said, you become the observer. And in that recognition that you are the observer of the thoughts and not the thought themselves, there's an enormous amount of space that gets created there, this sort of separation, right? And in that space is when you sort of have this, because if you naturally are saying like, well, I'm not that thought, then who am I? Oh, I am Luann. That's who I am. So it, it sort of naturally gives shape and distinction to us, to our souls, to who yes. we really are. And, and in that interaction, now we can start hearing your goddess. You can yes. start hearing that voice, right? So it just allows space for that voice to start coming through and start having you pay attention to it or having you having it guide you to whatever needs to be done. And and it also doesn't need to look perfect either. Like, and it doesn't need to look like what you traditionally think of as a meditation. I do, a, like lately, I do a lot of um, running as meditation for me. <laughs> like it is very powerful for me to do running lately. It hasn't always been the case. And um, sometimes it's like walking on the beach. That's a big one for me. Or walking a around in a nature preserve. So lately I've been going and running in this nature preserve that's pretty close to us. And there's, there's a dis it's important that I'm running in this nature preserve on sand with tree roots coming out versus running on the road, right? Concrete like with the Not, that, not yeah. that one is better than the other, right. but like- For you I, in this season, this exactly. is serving you at a higher level. Because I'm seeing Mother Nature all around me, all of a sudden I get really clear that like I'm just one tiny small speck of dust in this entire vast huge universe, right? And simultaneously, there's no one else like me. So it's this really beautiful humbling moment mm. that brings me back into just like whatever seems so important and oh my God, life is going to fall apart if I don't fix this one thing and I, you know, do this perfectly. Like all of a sudden, actually that doesn't really matter. Everything's right. going to be okay. It'll so it has a okay. huge calming effect. Just seeing all the little critters running around and seeing the snakes cross the road today, <laughs> um, <laughs> jumping over them at some time, at some points. <laughs> but that to me is, and in that, in the movement of that, my mind starts clearing and I just had this giant aha today as I was running, like just that voice, like sometimes she whispers, sometimes she screams. And today she screamed at me about something that I've been needing some clarity on. So for me, that was my meditation moment. So I, yes. I, I, I tend to have a very loose description of what meditation actually is. Not everyone agrees with me on that, but I, that's what I see. Anything that allows um, us to really uh, metaphorically slow down. I know I'm running here, but like metaphorically slow our minds down and observe and separate from these thoughts and come into who we truly are. I 1000% I, I agree with you. I mean, you know, I've said it before for 30 years, I had a practice of, I move my body six days a week and most days it was twice in a day. So there were things that I did on the regular, maybe three days a week, I would run two days a week. I would swim laps, maybe four days a week. I slam, I, sw I did laps one day. I jumped the rope for a half hour. Another day I ran, but almost always it was also complemented with a yoga session two or three nights a week, mm -hmm. or they would be in the morning and I would go to the pool in the afternoon or the evening. Right. And the thing is having missed doing that, having not doing that now, I, I'm 1000% aware at a very real level, that was meditation for me. Mm -hmm. I, and, and the thing is, what I also recognize is not that I'm not the most competitive person in the room and I wouldn't love a good game of kickball, but what I always gravitated to for 30 years was solo activities, mm -hmm. riding the bike for 40 miles, going for four or five, six mile runs, swimming 50, 60, 80 laps, doing a yoga class. You are in your own brain for each of these activities. Yeah. And yeah. so I agree with moving meditation. And what I'm just saying, my own personal observation is, is, I'm now not with all of those hours doing that, making time. I'm with the same hours. Let's yeah. be real. I'm just yeah. not devoting them in the same ways. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also, I think maybe really what I'm just saying is maybe I'm learning in this conversation that I need to build in stillness, which I mm. have not been doing. And, mm -hmm. and really what it is, is now I keep having ahas, Katie. This is why I love talking to you. It's like, <laughs> It's me now, my season, not advice yeah. for anyone else. It's like, yeah. oh, what you just said. It's like, what do I need? And I'm yeah. like, oh, sweetie. <laughs> you need a little you know? bit of stillness. Right? And yeah. it's crazy. And so it's just the thing about it is, is to get that and to understand that 
It's whoever you are, whatever you're doing, what is it? Like learn about who you are and what you need. And it will be different at different seasons of your life and different weeks or months too. A hundred percent. That's so true. I think that's the important thing to note is that it changes. We evolve, our yeah. needs evolve. What we, uh, what we crave is different. What we, how we need to be supportive is supported changes. Um, the tools that we're using change. There have been yeah. seasons of my life where I've been a 5 a.m. meditator for yeah. 45 minutes every single morning without fail. That ain't the season I'm in right now. <laughs> no, I'm in a I'm I'm in a what I call a grab and go meditation season. Like <laughs> when I I'll have the I'll, like I don't meditate every in the traditional sense. I don't meditate every day. What I'll do is um I just sort of have moments where I know I need to take five deep breaths. Yeah. Or I'll something will be really really intense and I'm holding like 12,000 layers of things on my shoulders and I'm like Oh, I need, I need to meditate because I can feel like the heaviness in my head and, and yes. I can, a meditation will clear that out. So, yeah. um, yeah, it, so it's about knowing yourself and knowing what it is you need in any given season or moment. Yeah. And that's something I really want to make sure that we point out right here is that while you are the renowned worldwide expert on meditation, um, you are running a major business. This is not like, oh, I just show up and I read some quiet words. You know, it's a major business behind you. And your husband, Chris, runs a major business. You're both entrepreneurs, two separate businesses and two little children. And so this isn't like, I'm at the season of my life where I can just like, and I know we talked about like yelling at the kids and, you know, you're needing the lunch with your friend, but this is, I'm not, I I need to not underestimate. This isn't like, well, I'm momming most of the time. And so when I need to run and I meditate, I've got the time. I know you are squeezing it in where I'm saying there's no time for it. I'm not squeezing it in. Mm -hmm. You, you have a lot on your shoulders and when you're coming to us, speaking to the entrepreneurs in my audience, you sit in that seat. It's 100%. whether a designer's running a firm with, you know, herself or himself or with 20 yeah. people, you're sitting in that seat with multiple employees, multiple, multiple initiatives. Yep. And the thing about the podcast is it's deadline driven. It is yeah. deadline driven. I, yeah. That is the thing. And I sold window treatments for four decades and quote unquote, like interior design, it's deadline driven. But you know, it's not the same as Tuesday at 2 a.m. It has to be uploaded to yeah. the platform. It is just yeah. different, you know? Yeah. So it's intense. Yeah. No, thank you for identifying that. that and that's very true. I, that probably can can seem like uh, it gets understated here. But yes, I am. I'm running a media company, a yeah. pretty significant media company here with <laughs> multiple employees, m- many contractors, um, single momming it in this particular moment. Um, and yeah, there's a, there are a lot of, we were talking before about like, okay, I have a hard stop at this time because I got to go pick up kids. <laughs> and you're like, I got to go pick up my grandkids. So that's actually worked great. So uh, yeah, yeah, there's like, there's we're fitting so... this calm conversation into the things that we have to do today. <laughs> But see, that's also the point where, which is I want to give my energy, my time and my energy to the things that fill me up, the things mm. that I really love. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm, I'm equal parts creative yes. writer. Let's talk about the touchy feely stuff and equal parts really sharp businesswoman. Let's talk about the details. What are the yep. deadlines? Where do we need to go? What are the goals? Like you and I really connect on that because we're That's like right. super, dri- I am yep. super, super driven ad nauseum. <laughs> um, so, you know, all those parts live in me equally and, and I want to give time to that, you know, being a working parent and somebody who is, has created a business from things that I love doing and is truly what I'm here to do in the world right now. I get equal amounts of gratification from that and equal amounts of gratification from being a mom and raising these two beautiful girls. And so I want to, and you know, spending time with my husband, like I want to make sure all the things that I say are important to me and fulfill me, I'm spending time there. So I'm okay, you know, chopping out a chunk of my day in order to, to do X, Y, or Z, or like on Monday, you know, my kid had a field trip. So my work time legit was the hour and a half when in the car, when she took a nap on the way home, like, let me pull over, let me do my work for an hour and a half. And then I went back to work after kids went down that night. Like that was my work day. So, you know, that's, 
and again, like all, there's no, there's no perfect way to do it. The perfect way lies within you in any given moment and what it is you need. And you have to create the space to learn that. That is yes. the thing. And that's where your meditations come in handy because yeah. it is the facilitation of, and sometimes it is the, the gentle nudge to remind every single one of us in whatever meditation you're addressing that, oh yeah, you're not alone. You're not the only unicorn that's ever yelled at your kids. You're not the only unicorn that's ever had a panic attack. You're not the only mm -hmm. unicorn that's never not been able to fall asleep. Like mm -hmm. this is a, you, these are universal emotions and feelings. And, you know, let me, meaning you, help you process it, guide through it and transcend it. Yeah. I love it. I have a question for you before I let yeah. you go. Yeah. So 20 different meditation podcast. Like I go to my app and I've got two or three of yours on the app, on my uh, um, Apple, on my iPhone. And mm -hmm. so they're in my library, but is there a website that we could go to and see all of them? And we could be like, I would like, like, I didn't realize you had done the kid ones. And I'm yeah. thinking, Oh, my grandchildren could use these. <laughs> so like, yeah. Let's get them on these. <laughs> yeah. Women's meditation network.com is okay. my home base. So you could see all of them there. Um, and then if you look up Women's Meditation Network on any podcast player, they all should come up. Okay. Um, you know, they should all kind of line up. And then they were really designed that way for you to pick and choose whichever to subscribe to whichever ones really call to you and that you need. Okay, good. Yeah. See, what I've done is I've downloaded the two or three. So when I, I just go to my libraries out to the search. Yep. So that's yep. good to know. I mean, Katie, this has been outstanding. I just love, I love our Voxers, our 90 hour long <laughs> Voxers. I love when we connect in person and I love when, you know, this is, I think the third time you've been on the show. I know, so with the evolution of Katie is on yes. the show, actually. Yeah. The yeah. different stages pretty, of your life. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? Uh, yeah. As we all evolve, as we all yeah. evolve. Yeah, so. def definitely. Uh, well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. My goodness. It was such a pleasure. I love this conversation and I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you.